Hi guys, today we're going to do section 8.2, arithmetic sequence and partial sums. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence where the difference between consecutive numbers are the same. So for example, right below here, if you notice, the difference between 7 and 11 is the same as 11 and 15, 15 to 19. What is the difference here? So, no, looking up here, the difference is a2 minus a1. So 11, which is a2 minus 7, a1 is 4. So that difference is 4. And the special word phrase for that is called, this is the common difference. And we use the variable d to represent it. So on the next slide here, this is the same sequence we just saw a2 minus a1 is 4 we always begin here n equals 1 and our sequence that we are talking about is 4n plus 3 in a slide or two we're going to talk about how to find the nth term of the sequence second example here the common difference so a2 minus a1, so th negative 3 minus 2. So our common difference is negative 5. We're going down 5 from 2 to negative 3, from negative 3 to 8. So d in this case is negative 5. Our nth term for the sequence is 7 minus 5m. So how do we find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence? This formula right here, d being the common difference and a1 being your first term. So let's take a look at this first example. Find a formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence whose common difference is 3 and whose first term is 2. Our notation a sub n means the nth term. So I just wrote out our formula down the bottom here, and we're going to plug things in. So common difference is 3. So d is 3. Our first term, a sub 1, is 2. We're looking for the nth term. So we're going to leave n as is. Distribute. So this a sub n is 2 plus 3n minus 3. Combine like terms. a sub n will be 3n minus 1. So if then if they ask you later, what is the 15th term, you would plug in 15 in for m. 3 times 15 is 45. 45 minus 1 is 44. So the 15th term in this sequence is 44. Next example here. The fourth term of an arithmetic sequence is 20, and the 13th term of that sequence is 65. Now we have to write the first 13 terms, so we need a few things. So we don't know what the common difference is, and we're not going from the first to the second. We're going from the fourth to the 13th. So we have three terms, and then all of a sudden the fourth one, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, and then the 13th is 65. They all have the same common difference, so we are adding the same thing. We're adding D how many times to get from the 4th to the 13th. So you'd be adding D, the common difference, 9 times. So, therefore, A sub 13 equals the 4th term, D, 9 times, so 9D. So let's plug this in and solve for our common difference. So solving algebraically, d is 5. So our common difference is 5. So finding the first 13 terms, we are going to add 5 to 20 up here. So 25, 30, 35, 40. And then to go backwards here, we need to subtract 5. Up here, this would be the first 13 terms of our sequence. Sorry that it got a little short on room there. 
All right. So now find the ninth term of an arithmetic sequence whose first two terms are 2 and 9. So we need to find our common difference. We need to set up our equation. So how to find the nth term of our sequence. And then we're finding our ninth term. So d a sub n and then final step is a sub 9. So go ahead and solve for d and the rule for what the nth term a sub n would equal. All right, our common difference is 7. So plugging that in, notice I put d in the front of n minus 1 just because you are constantly distributing, so your book kind of goes back and forth. The formula has d after n minus 1, but since multiplication is commutative, you can put it in the front there. So our expression for the nth term is 7n minus 5. Our question says the ninth term, so a sub 9 equals 7 times 9 minus 5. Evaluate this and finish out what the ninth term would equal. So the ninth term would equal 58. All right, so finding the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence with n number of terms is given by this formula here. Note that this formula only works for arithmetic sequences. So copy down this formula. So first example for this one, we're finding the sum of this finite series, uh, excuse me, sequence. So we need to know how many terms we have, and then we have to use a one and the last one here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten terms. So S, which is talking about the sum, the sum of the first n terms of our sequence is the number of terms, we just said there was ten, divided by two, and your first and your last term. So this will be five times twenty. So the sum is one hundred. If we were to add all these up. The sum of the first n number of terms in an infinite sequence is called the nth partial sum. So our example for this one, example number six, we're finding the 150th partial sum. So the sum of the first 150 terms of this infinite sequence. So what we need is the first term the 150th term, a sub 150, and then we're good to go. In order to find a, the 150th term, we need common difference and the formula for the nth term, and then plugging in 150. So we need d, we need a sub n, we need a sub 150, and then we're going to do s of 150. So go ahead and find the common difference d. The common difference is 11. a sub n, go ahead and find what the nth term of your sequence would be. Find the 150th term using that a sub n is 11n minus 6. The 150th term is 1644. So now using that, the sum of the 150th partial sum of this sequence is, let's not do that. We're finding the 150th, so 150 divided by 2. Your first term, 5, plus your 150th term, 1644. Four. Go ahead and compute this. The 150th partial sum of this arithmetic sequence is 123,675. All right, last problem, an application problem. All right, so. What is 20,000 representing? How about 15,000? 
You said 20,000 is your initial A sub 1. You are correct. So A sub 1 is 20,000. Each year, increasing sales by 15,000. So that is your common difference. If all is going well for 19 years, we're assuming that that goal is met. We're finding the total sales of the first 20 years. So total sales, all the sales made from every single year. So this is going to be what? If you said the 20th partial sum of this sequence, you are correct. So in order to do that, thinking back to the previous example, we need to know what a sub n is, and we need to know, therefore, what the 20th year would be. So a sub n equals Go ahead and simplify this out. Right, the expression for the nth term is written right here. So we're going to use that to find the 20th term, so a sub 20. So go ahead and do that. All right, so the annual sales for the 20th year would be $305,000. But we all know the total sales over the first 20, so we are finding s sub 20. So go ahead and use your formula that you wrote down to find what the 20th partial sum would be of this problem. All right, the total sales for all 20 years of business and operation here is $3.25 million, or written right out here. All right, guys, let me know if you have any other questions for this section. It is really just getting situated and acclimated with the formulas given. This is all for arithmetic sequences. Later on, we're going to do geometric sequences and you will later find out these applications in calculus. Thanks guys. Let me know if you have any questions.